Even famous people break the law. Many celebrities have gone to jail, including comedian Tim Allen, young boy Ryan Grantham, and actress Amy Locaine. A celebrity's life is not always glamorous, and the pressures of fame do not always come without consequences. Over the years, many celebrities have been arrested for various offenses. However, not all of them committed serious crimes. Are there any celebrities who went to jail or are currently rotting? Usually, celebrities feel they live in their world and abide by their own rules. Some celebrities have gone to prison on charges ranging from tax fraud to sexual assault and even murder. Below are the famous people who went to jail. Suge Knight Marion Hughes Suge Knight Jr., the CEO of Death Row Records, had a confrontation with a man named Skillybone Sloan, who worked on the biography Straight Outta Compton, according to the investigation. The conflict became so heated that Knight injured Sloan with his vehicle and ran over Terry Carter, who died from his injuries. Knight first claimed that his acts were self-defense and that two armed individuals were pursuing him. Three years later, Knight negotiated an agreement to plead guilty and was sentenced to 22 years in jail for intentional murder and six years for an additional strike violation, completing 28 years in prison. He has been in prison at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego County, California since 2018 and is not eligible for freedom until 2037. Not long after being in prison, Knight claims that Dr. Dre had a plan to murder him. He told The Blast it was a murder-for-hire campaign with a paper trail and evidence that Drew was part of a plan to get rid of Knight. Rain Grantham Rain Grantham was a young Canadian actor whose career seemed to take off until he made a fatal mistake. He appeared in around 40 films and television episodes throughout his brief acting career. His acting premiere came in the 2007 television film The Secret of the Nutcracker, followed by a role in the big-budget sci-fi action thriller Jumper in 2008. Grantham appeared in several other film and television productions before moving on to higher-profile roles, such as Little Anton in Terry Gilliam's The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus and Rodney James in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Grantham's promising Hollywood career, however, ended tragically on March 31, 2020, when he shot his mom in the back of the head, according to the New York Times. Long after his horrific murder, Grantham recorded a video confession and even threatened to murder Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He chose not to, ultimately handing himself to the authorities the next day. Grantham was sentenced to life in prison with a 14-year parole period. His attorney, Chris Johnson, recently told CNN that the convicted star has advised me that he's getting the help he needs and has gained some insight into what happened and why. He also regrets what he did to his mother. Sea Murder Sea Murder, a musician, was sentenced to life in prison for killing a youngster during a fight in 2002. According to the Associated Press, Sea Murder, whose actual name was Corey Miller, got into an argument with a 16-year-old fan named Steve Thomas outside a club in Harvey, Louisiana. According to MTV News, a jury determined that Miller Thomas fired a single shot in the chest as the teenager lay on his back while being attacked by the rapper's friends. Following a legal action in 2013, C-Murder was forced to provide the victim's family with more than $1.1 million, according to Page Six. C-Murder has continuously stated his innocence, in January 2018, his publicist Tammy claimed Al Hip Hop claimed that they knew of a prisoner in a different jail who confessed to Thomas' murder on camera and even signed a declaration proving it. Reports he also showed the rap news site that C-Murder was at the time on a hunger strike to raise awareness about his claim that he and other convicts were denied proper health care and treated inhumanly. According to Louisiana Weekly, C-Murder's defense team has requested a new prosecution based on recanted evidence from two individuals who identified him as the shooter during his first trial. Still, prosecutors in the case continue to seek to block efforts on behalf of the sentenced rapper. He was denied a retrial in 2019. Emmy Locaine Emmy Locaine is an actress with a significant breakthrough and occasional appearance as Andrea Winger in the temporary 1980s comedy Spencer. She spent the next several years primarily on television, but it wasn't long before she made her big picture premiere in 1989's Los Angels, alongside Donald Sutherland and Adam Horowitz. Throughout the 1990s, the actress appeared in a wide range of productions including the blockbuster TV series Melrose Place, the acclaimed drama Blue Sky, the biographical Prefontaine, and more. According to reports, Locaine's acting career suffered an enormous blow when after leaving a rap party for a theater performance in 2010. She drank too much and caused two automobile accidents. But it was the second accident that put her in trouble, as she crashed into Fred Seaman's vehicle, killing his wife, Helene Seaman. The actress was found guilty of two offenses and received a distinctive sentence of five years in prison, which was reduced to three. But Locaine's legal troubles did not end there. 
Despite being paroled, detectors found that she had been sentenced many times after her first conviction in 2012 on the basis that her prior terms were too harsh penalties. In 2020, she received an eight-year sentence. Tim Allen Timothy Allen Dick was born on June 13, 1953 in Denver, Colorado. His father, a real estate salesman, was killed in a collision with a drunk driver while driving his family home from a University of Colorado football game when Tim was 11 years old. Tim Allen is undoubtedly most famous for his role as Tim Taylor, the family man on ABC's Home Improvement, which catapulted the stand-up comedian into a new stratum of fame. While the character Allen played is recognizable and the actor's subsequent Hollywood films in the 1990s were booming, few people know he used to be a drug dealer. The family-friendly comic actor you know and love spent two years and four months in a federal prison for drug trafficking. Of course, that deal was only feasible once he agreed to rat out nearly two dozen drug dealer peers. Allen was involved by an undercover officer named Michael Pfeiffer, who allegedly had been following the amateur drug dealer for months. It was Pfeiffer to whom Allen unwittingly gave the brown Adidas gym bag filled with cocaine. Instead of receiving his expected $42,000, Allen found himself handcuffed. Allen still faced three to seven years in prison but ultimately only served two years and four months. He was released from the Federal Correctional Institution in Sandstone, Minnesota on June 12, 1981. Austin Jones If you're unfamiliar with YouTube, you may not know Austin Jones. He racked up more than half a million subscribers by performing capella covers of popular songs on the YouTube channel he launched in 2007. Since then, Jones has become one of the most controversial figures on the platform, and his behavior ultimately earned him a decade-long prison sentence. In 2015, Jones was accused of lying about his age to get underage girls to send him unusual videos because that made him happy, according to the now-defunct music blog. More than 9,000 people signed a petition calling for his removal. At the time, Jones did admit to soliciting videos of teenage girls, but did not directly address whether or not they were sexual. It wasn't until two years later that the star was arrested at Chicago O'Hare International Airport on two counts of felony child abuse, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. After Jones pleaded guilty in February 2019 and his YouTube account was swiftly removed, he received a shocking 10-year sentence, which he began in June of that year via the Chicago Tribune. Elizabeth Holmes In 2014, Elizabeth Holmes looked revolutionary in technology and medicine. The 30-year-old Stanford University dropout was hailed as one of the youngest self-made billionaires in history and compared to innovators like Steve Jobs after she founded Theranos, a company built around a cutting-edge device called the Edison Test. Holmes claimed that the Edison test could accurately diagnose myriad medical conditions with just a few drops of blood without the need for painful, invasive, expensive, and time-consuming tests. Investors decided to invest in Holmes and Theranos, which reached a $9 billion valuation. By 2016, however, everything had been exposed as too good to be true. The Edison test failed to achieve its stated purpose. Theranos failed, and Holmes was accused of and eventually charged with fraud. A jury determined that Holmes knew her invention didn't work when she persuaded investors to fund Theranos. In January 2022, the judge found Theranos guilty of four of the 11 accusations brought against it in federal court. The jury found Holmes guilty of cheating patients and conspiracy to defraud patients but could not decide on the counts of defrauding investors. In November 2022, Judge Edward Davila sentenced Holmes to 11 years and three months in prison, three years of supervised release post-parole, $400 in fines and a restitution order. In 2023, Holmes saw her sentence reduced to nine years, meaning she'll be free in 2032. War Machine When mixed martial arts became famous in the 2000s, War Machine, formerly John Coppenhaver, was one of the sport's most visible fighters and significant achievements. From 2004 to 2013, he had five defeats and 14 wins with eight professional knockouts. War Machine competed in several major circuits, including Extreme Fighting Championships, but later MA, and the UFC. He was also a cast member on the UFC branded reality TV show, The Ultimate Fighter. Less than a year after his final fight, War Machine was involved in an exceedingly unpleasant and violent event. In 2014, he went to his previous romantic partner's Las Vegas house and kidnapped, attacked, and harassed her. He also severely attacked the victim's friend, who was present in the residence at the time. War Machine was charged with 31 total counts, and a Nevada jury convicted him guilty of all but two counts of attempted murder. War Machine was sentenced to life in prison and will be eligible for parole in 2053.